this is about less sugar. <laughs> less sugar, yes, less sugar. Okay, I'm going to ask the assistants to just uh, fade into the background, to clear the center aisles, please. That includes Joe Zazu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Less sugar. I don't think it's a big secret. We're out of control with sugar in a society. <laughs> we are out of control. And it's gone crazy. I know a lot about this. My mother's been an insulin diabetic for uh, about 30 years. Um, her blood sugar is about as stable as the raging waters around Cape Horn. What's supposed to happen is that we take in sugar or glucose, and we do that through carbohydrates. Now, interestingly enough, carbohydrates are also fruits and vegetables, the things that Diane was recommending to us the other day. Fruits and vegetables, and a bowl of broccoli is a carbohydrate. A bowl of white sugar is a carbohydrate. Why? Because they both break down into glucose ultimately, and we need glucose to feed our body for energy. We need glucose to think. We need glucose. We just don't need tons of glucose. <laughs> What's supposed to happen is the glucose comes into the blood. The body doesn't need glucose in the blood. There's nothing it can do with it, and it's ultimately harmful. So the pancreas signals it produces insulin. Insulin tells the cells, open up and receive the glorious glucose into you so that then you can have energy to function or you can actually feed energy to other cells that need it. If there's too much sugar, don't worry about it because it's, you never know when it's going to be a rainy day or as the apocalypse comes along. We'll have some storage that we will then release. And in fact, this goes on when you go to sleep at night. <clears throat> You haven't eaten, you still need glucose to function. The body releases that storage in the form of free fatty acids into the bloodstream, and you function marvelously well. At least you're supposed to, because at midnight you're a little bit hungry, you're still involved in the internet, and what? why not have a little snack of a pizza? <laughs> oh my god, I didn't notice I'd eaten the whole pizza. And then you go to sleep. So your body is going, what the hell is this person doing? <laughs> it's working like crazy. Instead of releasing free fatty acids, is, insulin is opening up cells, and things are being stored, and everything's going crazy. The body doesn't have time to rest and recuperate and take out the garbage. It's working overtime. Well, that's OK for a night. But my God, after 40 years, the body says, fuck you. <laughs> we don't want to get to that state. <laughs> and we have a choice. But in a way, we are victims. I want you to know you are victims, so your basic selves don't have to take full responsibility. <laughs> The food, inter the food industry is dedicated to getting you addicted to sugar. It's dedicated because it sells stuff. I mean, who likes stuff without sugar? <laughs> and if you go out for, you know, just like, here's your sugarless wedding cake. I mean, all the guests are depressed, aren't they? It's the most miserable wedding I've ever been to. There's no sugar, really. Really, they're dedicated into getting you into sugar. And it's a huge problem in this society. I saw my primary care physician, and I said to him, you know, I'm writing, uh, putting together a book on health. And he said, that's great. And unsolicited, he said, you know, I get lots of patients in here. And uh, he's not involved in MSI at all. He said, I get lots of patients in here. And they can make, they're pre-diabetic or they're diabetic. And they can make the smallest lifestyle change a little bit of exercise, a little bit of less sugar in their diet, nothing huge, just a small, and they would avoid diabetes. And I tell them this, 
and 50% of the people I tell look at me blankly and say, Doc, just give me a pill. <laughs> this is what he told me. I don't know if that applies too much. We have a lot of aware people in this room, but you have to understand that is what's going on as a culture. And it is huge, and it's huge sociologically, but more importantly here, don't get to that point. Make the lifestyle changes that can get you and keep you healthy. When you have sugar, the insulin comes in. The sugar and the insulin are like this beautiful, harmonious wave going through your body. But what happens is that we spike up the sugar with refined sugars, and then it spikes down. But insulin doesn't go spike. It kind of is much more slowly to adjust. So you have a high insulin and high sugar. Low, low sugar, high insulin. Even higher sugar, even higher insulin. And body starts to break down and age. And it begins to glycate. And glycation is like the caramelization. And that happens in the cells. And the cells get sticky. And they no longer slide over each other. And we gradually slow down. And we get these degenerative diseases. And it becomes a huge, huge problem. Now, does that mean give up sugar? Hell no. <laughs> You're not going to take away my sugar. I mean, these people that Diane was referring to, these 100-year-old Russians or whatever in the blue zone with their vodka, alcohol is pure sugar. For God's sakes, that's why they were so alive. <laughs> They're so into their vodka, they didn't even notice they were getting older. <laughs> Just go to them. Do you realize you're 106 years old? I mean, if you told them they were no longer going to have their vodka, in three days they'd all be dead. <laughs> they start dying at 20 and stop reproducing. It's really important. You know, I liked, I liked uh, frozen, yeah, well, I like frozen yogurt. I mean, I, you pink berry and red mango, and you go to those places. They're very austere. Everybody's kind of just having their little bits, very sophisticated on the internet and stuff. Go into yogurt land. Oh my god, well in yogurt land, they sell it by the pound. <laughs> it really is by the ounce, but it ends up by the pound. So you go into yogurt land, you just get your frozen yogurt, that's great, right? But then there's a wall of desserts. I have a little bit of chocolate, some sprinkles, some M&Ms, a little more chocolate, a little bit more sprinkles, some M&Ms, some chocolate crunch, some Rocky Road, some clusters, some this. The place is filled with kids, and they're all quiet. <laughs> it is basic self-heaven. It is basic self-heaven, but they're all stuffing themselves with sugar. We like sugar. I mean, there's several of you who have given up sugar here. You have the discipline to know refined. Now, I'm talking about refined sugar. We need sugar. We need glucose. You've given up refined sugars and the sweeteners and all of that. And I really admire you. And I'm going to offend you right now. And I may, my Facebook friends may go down to 900. <laughs> but really, who wants to be around someone who's given up sugar? <laughs> they don't look happy. No, really. I mean, that discipline is admirable, but I mean, I don't want it around me, you know? <laughs> I mean, they don't look happy. I mean, it's just like, yes, I'm really happy that you've given up sugar. It's fantastic for 12 years. And I'm really happy that you've given, that you can run five miles a day. And yes, you've done two hours of SEs for the last 25 years without <laughs> failure. And please step to the left and fuck off. I admire those people, but from a distance. 
I don't want to be confronted with my own inadequacy. <laughs> so the point is there is a middle way. The Buddha talked about the middle way, and then we said, yeah, that's great, but is there another way? <laughs> so please, watch yourself. Listen to your body. I remember I did the Jeff McClome's diet plan, or it was Life Force, and it's really a great plan. He's a great practitioner in MSI. I got a lot of benefit out of it. And um, it did involve for a while doing without sugar, and uh, my wife and I ended up screaming at each other. <laughs> we normally shout at each other, <laughs> but we were screaming at each other. So if you're going off sugar, anger management is, is part of it. But he would, he would say, you know, listen to your body, listen to your body, constantly emphasize, listen to your body. And I'm sure that, you know, when a patient dies on his, on, on his diet, <laughs> he just said, someone I know wasn't listening to their body. 